Hi YouTube, that had eight five here, and I am just going to go into a lot of different things that I ha have been watching. Um, right now, I'm on my computer, and I do have internet access at home, which is great. Um, and I have been really just looking at a lot of different things. Uh, first, I want to talk about the election and international observers. Um, I am really glad about this because of the simple fact that we have seen a lot of uh, Republican-led, conservative-led. Um, attempts to block the vote. Um, Democrats want to barack the vote. Republicans on the right, far right Republicans want to bullock the vote. So the UN international monitors um, have been warned by Texas Attorney General, um, what is it, Greg Abbott, to keep their distance. Um, this is something that I feel, um, they said that if observers are found to be stationed within 100 feet of the entrance to a polling place, they could be subject to criminal prosecution. And I doubt that the Tea Party backed um, True the Vote uh, will have those same things. Um, we'll have those same things, we'll have that same, same warning. Another one is uh, the international monitoring at U.S. polling uh, spots draw criticism from voter fraud groups, quote voter fraud groups, at The Hill, um, thehill.com uh, home news. Uh, one of them, one of the, the spokeswomen for the um, OSCE, which is called the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, says this. Um, where is it? They will observe the overall election process, not just the ballot casting. They are focusing on a number of areas on the state level, including the legal system, election administration, the campaign, campaign financing, and new voting technologies used in the different states. And she says the OSCE has been regularly invited to observe elections in the U.S. in line with their commitments. Um, international observers are explicitly allowed in states like Missouri, South Dakota, North Dakota, and New Mexico, and in some states they are not. Um, in some states they are not able to do so. But they said this with, through our contacts at the state and county levels in certain states. We managed to secure invitations at the local level, and we have taken up the offer to observe. When, when this is not possible, we will respect the state regulation on this matter and will not observe in precincts on election day. But I am sure that there will be uh, individuals out there um, from the state that will in fact uh, go to those precincts and will be able to observe. Um, the reason why I am so glad about this is because of, of the simple fact that it has been a concerted effort. It hasn't been a fringe group, a fringe amount of people who are doing this. It has been a party-wide, um, we saw election uh, demo, uh, democratic registrations thrown out in Virginia. Virginia. We've also seen some in um, Colorado, but we're also, this has been going on, um, especially since Obama won the election. They have been trying to, it's even been, been, it's always done every 40 years. They want to try, or excuse me, every four years to make sure that a Republican gets in that office. And uh, voter fraud has only become an issue in the last two years. Also, there's a letter to Barack Obama. Uh, from a gentleman named George McGovern, who says there are six things that we need to do to help clean up this mess, bring all our troops home from Afghanistan this year, uh, close U.S. military bases in the Arab world. I don't know. Um, that that doesn't – I mean, even if we never had uh, bases in the Arab world, Osama bin, bin Laden would still um, – he would still be after us. We need to evaluate whether it is necessary to keep other American troop consignments to Europe, South America, South Korea, and elsewhere. Um, I'm not really sure about that part. I don't know. I re really don't don't know, know a lot about that military part of it. But I mean, if anything, um, keeping a pr presence around the world, I would think, would be beneficial, especially if we need to um, intervene in in an, uh, in an international incident. Um, President Obama should call on the Pentagon to reduce the current military budget of $700 billion to $500 billion next year, and then over the next five years to $200 billion. Um, they said, um, he says in a careful and persuasive study, Lawrence Korb, senior fellow at the Center of American Progress and an assistant secretary of defense under Ronald Reagan, identifies unneeded and costly programs that could be cut from the Pentagon budget without weakening our security, including the elimination of sophisticated warplanes, all of which added up could save a trillion dollars over the next 10 years. Number five is Bush tax cuts should not only be repealed but reversed. Increased revenues could be used to reduce the national debt, and which would be strong resistance to ending 
Uh, there would, of course, be strong resistance to ending the fa fa uh, tax favoritism enjoyed by the rich. But this bonanza for the few at the top must end. And number six, savings in the military spending could be used to launch valuable public investments, thereby creating jobs and stimulating the entire economy. The administration has expressed support for creating a European-style high rails uh, high-speed rail system in the U.S., and indeed, we ought to build the fastest, cleanest, and safest passenger and freight train system in the world. And he should revive the full provisions of the World War II era GI Bill, which allowed many um, to uh, many soldiers to secure a college education at government expense while also re receiving a cost of life stipend. There have been a lot of people um, who have benefited from this and got a PhD in in many other in many other um in many other in many fields okay and in fact a lot of individuals who have fought during world war ii did go to college and they've become um some of the most well-known individuals in different fields so that's a, that's one and i uh closing out this uh blip in the news i guess is new york top new york's top court dis, um declines to hear same-sex marriage appeal. Uh, New, the New York's New York State's top court has declined to hear an appeal from a Monroe County-based group that sought to overturn the state's law regarding same-sex marriage or uh, uh, allowing such. The state court of appeals announced his decision Tuesday. He, uh, New Yorkers for Constitutional Freedom, a conservative group opposed to same-sex unions, filed a lawsuit against the state Senate last year, claiming Republicans in the chamber had violated the state's open meetings law when discussing gay marriage. In particular, the group took issue with closed-door session held in 2011 with New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, the Senate's GOP's top financial backer and a supporter of same-sex marriage. A state Supreme Court judge in Livingston County initially ruled the group's open meetings law claim could proceed, but the law was unanimously tossed in July by the appellate division, which ruled that the Senate meetings complied with the law. In fact, caucuses um, also do fall under that. The Spencerport-based group later asked the Court of Appeals for permission to argue its case before the top court, a requirement if the appellate division rules unanimously. The appeal, however, was denied by the court on Tuesday. No explanation was given, as it is standard procedure when the Court of Appeals declines to take a case. The denial likely marks the end of a road of the road for the lawsuit, which tried to have the law thrown out on procedural grounds. A court's decision was cheered by Governor Andrew Cuomo, who ushered the law through the GOP-held Senate in June 2011. With the court's decision, same-sex couples no longer have to worry that their right to marry can legally be challenged in this state. The freedom to marry is in the state is secure for generations to come. Jason McGuire says that um, he blasted the Court of Appeals for not wanting to touch this political monstrosity. He said this, or he also, he quote, uh, that's his quote, we are disappointed, essentially, that the court that we now have a court that says they are going not going to serve the proper role of a check and balance in the legislature ha that has gone rogue. That is unfortunate. He required he predicted the legal challenges um, to same sex marriage laws could soon crop up, whether it complies with both the state and federal constitutions. He pointed to a farm in Shag Shadatoke in Blah County that was on the receiving end of a complaint to the State Division of Human Rights this month after the farm's management refused to allow to all many women to wed there. He says that it's about, um, he says that, quote, it's about religious freedom issues. And then Empire State Pride Agenda is bullshit, so I'm not even going to touch that. He said, but they do say this, nothing can stop the momentum of full equality that started right here in New York State. I am happy. Uh, oh, wow, it's almost nine minutes. I'm very happy about this uh, because now this challenge can end. It's no longer it's it's not going to be there. So um, maybe uh, there will be other challenges to it, but I don't think that the New York State, um, New York State, we're not going anywhere. We're not going to back away. Uh, we can't afford to. So have a great day, you two. And this is my little hodgepodge.